Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, this is Yu Yan from Google. So I'll be talking about some of our past research on uh, understanding and improving multi-task generalization. So as you can see from the title, uh, the machine learning area that I'll be focusing on today is uh, multi-task learning. Uh, so in many multi-task, multi uh, in many uh, machine learning applications today, there's usually more than one task that is of interest. So as an example, a content recommendation platform may care about multiple types of user responses, including their satisfaction signals and engagement signals. For example, whether they clicked, liked, or rated some contents or not. And this would actually uh, usually require uh, one single model to predict multiple quantities at the same time which, with shared feature space. Uh, then a, model, a multitask learning model uh, will be a nice fit for this kind of scenarios to model multiple quantities accurately and efficiently together. And uh, formally, a multitask learning is defined as uh, learning jointly learning multiple tasks together with a shared input space. And uh, so with the same feature, you could have multiple observations representing the different tasks here. And then the, motivation, uh, the, the, the optimization problem will be the joint optimization of a vector valued loss function where each element uh, represents the empirical loss of the corresponding task. And then you'll just aggregate different uh, losses for the task together. And so there should be like a weight uh, in front of each task loss here. So it's like a weighted combination of different losses. And then usually the, the uh, most popular model architecture for multitask learning is shown here where you have a shared bottom model architecture where on the bottom you have a shared component uh, where you're learning the common the, the, the common uh, characteristics for the different tasks. Uh, and then on top of that shared representation, you would have different task specific hats learning the specific characteristics of each, uh, each task. So basically this, sh uh, we call this shared bottom arch model architecture is one of the most popular architectures for multitask learning model today. And it offers a compact and efficient way to learn and serve multiple quantities uh, in large online systems. So uh, multitask learning has a lot of benefits, but at the same time, it also comes with its unique challenges. So one unique challenge is the trade-off among the performance across different tasks. So as an example, uh, we will dive into this experiment later, uh, but here we just show uh, this typical multitask learning data set that people have created uh, using the uh, famous MNIST, MNIST data set, uh, which is by selecting two random MNIST digits and overlaying them on top of each other with a small offset. So for example, on the top right here, you'll see a five on the left and six on the right. And then they create this uh, multitask data set with the, multi uh, with the two tasks as learning both the right digit and the, uh, the left digit and the right digit at the same time. So those are two tasks. And uh, down here, you can see a plot uh, where different colors actually representing different multitask lear learning algorithms we'll be comparing. Uh, but what I wanna show here is that all these curves have this nice and concave shaped uh, uh, like a shape there, which represents the trade-off between the accuracy of predicting the left digit versus the, the accuracy of predicting the right digit. So basically there will be a trade-off using one single model to predict two digits at the same time. Uh, so now the question becomes, uh, how do we efficiently uh, leverage multitask learning's benefits while be aware of the potential trade-offs it also introduces? That will be the focus of our work here. So as a brief recap, for multitask learning, uh, the goal will be to jointly optimize the performance of multiple tasks together, or in other words, want to optimize multitask generalization. And the reason for doing that includes, uh, it could help uh, harder tasks or tasks with limited training example through transfer learning effects. And then with this uh, compact and efficient form of modeling, it actually re uh, introduces a regularization effect uh, and also it will provi provides a more efficient model of, to help us uh, train and serve multiple quantities in large online systems. And at the same time, I just mentioned that multitask learning comes with this 
uh, trade-off or challenge that it needs to be aware of the task training conflicts. So uh, a very similar field actually exists long before multitask learning uh, in the optimization community is called multi-objective optimization. I think people are familiar with this notion as well. So for multi-objective optimization, uh, the goal would be that you're actually faced with the situation that you have to optimize multiple quantities using one single model. So you have no other choice. And the goal would be to obtain the Pareto frontier or which is defined as the set of Pareto optimal solutions when you are facing when you are faced with this multiple conflicting quantities. So as an example here, you have two objectives and the, the smaller the better. So the efficient frontier will be this darker blue curve here. Not sure if that's very visible, but that will be the goal of a multi-objective optimization problem, which is to obtain the full set of Pareto optimal solutions. And then it faces the same challenge as multitask learning, which is different tasks would have conflicts. So uh, we know that the theory for multi-objective optimization exists uh, decades ago and is well developed. And it actually suggests that uh, sufficient parameterization is needed for properly handling task conflicts. Basically saying that the, the larger the model, the better it is at handling task conflicts. So this actually introduced the question for us. So in the, uh, in multitask deep learning, uh, the models we have today are larger models always necessarily better for multitask learning. So this is the question we're trying to investigate with this work. Hopefully that provides more uh, like enough context and motivation for this work. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, we start with uh, understanding the parameterization effect for uh, multitask learning. And in particular, we want to understand are larger models ne necessarily better for multitask learning? So to do this, uh, we start with some synthetic experiments uh, by creating synthetic data. So here uh, you can see we created a multitask learning data set with two regression tasks uh, being uh, predict, trying to predict the sum of sine functions. Okay, so here you have task one uh, being a sum of different uh, sine functions and uh, task two being a, a sum of uh, another set of sine functions. And to introduce uh, task relatedness together with task conflicts, we let this W1 and W2 here have a small over, overlap, but a large part of them do not overlap, which means that they are related, but they are also very conflicted very conflicting yeah so that's basically the data we created for the synthetic experiment and we use the most popular model architecture which is a shared bottom uh, model and then we vary the size of the task specific hat uh, to observe the effect on the Pareto frontier with uh, different model sizes and then uh, what we see is that uh, first by increasing the number of hidden layers for the task specific hats from zero to three. So when we make, make them bigger, the Pareto frontier on the test data set improves. So basically you see the Pareto frontier for loss of task two and task one, they, they are increasing when, you're, when we are increasing the number of hidden layers from zero to three. So this is not surprising and this coincides with the multi-objective optimization theory. But what's more interesting is that as we keep increasing the number of hidden layers uh, from five to seven to nine, we actually see the Pareto frontier is going backwards in the sense that it's making the model worse. This is super interesting and super intriguing to us at the time we found that. And we think this actually points to some largely ignored trade-off that remained largely ignored today. Uh, in not multitask learning, which is between the mitigating task training conflicts and the improving multitask generalization. So what do we mean by that? So basically, uh, as we just saw, multitask learning looks very much like a multi-objective optimization problem. And we, if we follow the multi-objective optimization theory, we will know that uh, sufficient model capacity is needed to minimize the task training conflicts. This will suggest that larger models are always better for multitask learning. But it seems that it's not the case from the second plot we just saw. So what's wrong there? Or, or what, what are the possible other mechanisms going on there? So what we know for multitask learning is that it actually uh, benefits from this transfer learning effect, which is, is uh, leveraging parameter sharing and inductive transfer, 
which could uh, benefit the generalizability of the learn share representations. So basically, different tasks can help each other. And by helping, you have to have the model compact enough so that the models would be aware of each other's information they are learning from this model. So the model cannot be too big, or larger models actually benefit less from such transfer learning effects. So basically, this points to a trade-off in multitask learning that has remained largely under-discussed uh, to our best knowledge, which is that uh, for multitask learning, large models will mitigate task training conflicts better, but at the same time, it also undermines the benefits of sharing or potentially even hurt multitask generalization, as we just saw for the second plot there, which is the Pareto frontiers going backwards. So larger models are not necessarily always better for multitask learning. So then the question becomes, if this is the case, how can we improve the trade-off and uh, improve the multitask generalization? Uh, this comes to our next session of the talk, which is uh, our proposed method to improve multitask generalization. And it is actually a very simple and naive uh, trick, but uh, bears with um, many interesting insights, I would say. So what do we uh, know already? So we just learned that uh, small multitask learning models, they generalize well to multiple tasks, but they suffer from the training conflicts. Well, if we keep increasing the size of the models and make them really large, they are able to better mitigate task training conflicts from the theory of multi-objective optimization, but they suffer from loss of multi, uh, they suffer from the loss of multitask generalization in the sense that different tasks cannot efficiently learn from each other or where the transfer learning benefits is diminished. The, Basically, these two observations uh, motivate us to think that can we design an objective or automatic data, data dependent treatment that can help us achieve the best of both worlds in the sense that we can uh, both leverage the transfer learning effects from, large, uh, from small multitask learning models and also be able to better handle the task training conflicts. So what we propose is uh, to introduce a small uh, under-parameterized self-auxiliaries uh, head for each task here. So on the left uh, plot here, we show uh, this idea. So basically, we have the original towers uh, for each of the tasks. What we're proposing is to add one extra tower that is very small, so that's under-parameterized. And uh, that's uh, significantly smaller than the original head, uh, head, but it's learning exactly the same task. So basically, we're adding this additional loss term in the loss function when we're training uh, this multitask learning model. And at training time, each task is basically trained with an additional tower, but with a much smaller param uh, number of uh, parameters. And, and it's, it's corresponding to this additional loss term here. Uh, not sure if people are able to see my um, mouse, but basically, yeah, that's the self auxiliary loss for task T I'm pointing to here. And then uh, at serving time, we basically discard this small head and only use the original task head for the prediction. So that means that at training time, we introduce this extra term, uh, but since the towers are under parameterized, so we introduce little extra training cost. But at serving time, as we discard all the additional like self auxiliaries and use the original has output, there will be no extra serving cost. So this is as simple as it is. That's our proposal to improve the multitask generalization. Well, why this possibly could work? So if we uh, take a closer look at this particular treatment, we're essentially uh, training the same task twice uh, with two towers one with the original parameterization and the other with under parameterization. And why this would work, then basically the shared bottom part, if you think about its learning dynamics, it will be forced to learn a representation that suits both the original task tower and the small task towers. Okay, so originally it has the freedom to choose uh, to basically either allocate the information here in the shared bottom or to the test original tower. But now because of the existence of this additional tower, it's kind of forced to, to, to extract or to, to, to let the sharing happen in the shared layers as much as possible. 
because you have to make the shared representations good enough so that it can predict the small tower using the small tower as well. So in other words, this proposed self auxiliaries can act as an implicit regularization uh, to force the shared representations to learn a more compact and generalizable representation across different tasks. And hopefully this will help us improve the multitask generalization. And uh, so what can we use as the self auxiliary towers? So theoretically, anything that's significantly smaller than the original task tower would work. And in practice, uh, we find that these architectures tend to work well. So for example, you can just use a very single, uh, very simple single fully connected layer. Or if you want to further reduce the uh, parameterization, you can do additional pooling on the input layer for this additional tower to further reduce the number of parameters. Or in the case where the shared representation, like the output of the shared bottom is really large with huge number of dimensions, then you can introduce this bottleneck layer, which can help you uh, further reduce uh, the number of parameters. And we, in, uh, in the experiments, we found that uh, these uh, architectures tend to work well as self auxiliaries. Um, hi, okay. Yun, sorry to interrupt, but we're running yeah. a little over time. Um, I see. So, okay. So thanks. Yeah. Just, uh, just request you to uh, wrap up. So how long do I have? Uh, you're already over one minute, but yeah, take two more I minutes. I see. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll finish in one more minute. Thanks for the reminder. So we did run some experiments using this set of ideas. Uh, the first one is multi-amnist and multi-fashion amnist, as I just mentioned, uh, where we have two digits overlay on top of each other. And then we compare across different multitask learning baselines uh, using, uh, for example, either the vanilla linear weighting, which is the most popular way people are doing multitask learning today, or some other like multitask learning baselines, uh, which uh, uh, improves the generalizability for different tasks. And uh, I just want to call out maybe this one experiment given the time. Uh, so we tried this method on different model sizes. Uh, and we see that because we believe larger models introduce more generalization challenges, and we hope our method would uh, perform better on the larger models. And we saw that that was indeed the case. So the red curve was our method. And we see that the larger the model, the greater the improvement our method has over the other baselines. So we tried this idea on other experiments, on other data sets as well, I'll skip those. And we also implement this in an online uh, content recommendation platform. That's one of the largest um, in the world today, and um, which has eight tasks in total, some related to user satisfaction, others related to user engagement tasks. And uh, we also basically find the similar findings in that uh, by simply adding this additional small towers for each of the heads, we will be able to improve the metrics both offline and online. And yeah, that will be the end of my talk. And thank you everyone. And sorry for being over time. That's fine, Yuan. Uh, thank you for the great talk. Totally uh, would need more time to cover everything. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll not take too much time and open the floor for questions. Uh, we can take around uh, two more minutes for questions. Um, while people are thinking, um, I'll probably start with a small one. Um, so you said that you experimented increasing the the depth of the task uh, network um, mm -hmm. in the original experiment, in the mm -hmm. motivation experiment. Um, yeah. So my question is, did you think about increasing the width or the depth of the shared network? Because I think, um, that's uh, a little more um, obvious, I think, uh, in the, for the lack of a better word, because that representation will be shared by most of the heads, right? Um, so uh, just, uh, it, it, did you think on that or what is your thought on that? Yeah, thanks for the question. That was actually one of the questions we got from the reviewers. So we'd like to thank the reviewers as well on that. So we actually added additional experiments uh, to the appendix, which also plays with the width and the depth of the shared networks for the synthetic data experiment. And the results are basically consistent. The observations are still the same. And we also want to call out that the, the multi-amnist experiments we have been running, uh, which has the three different um, 
uh, model sizes, those were varying both the shared bottom layers and the task specific layers. So the bigger models are bigger in both parts. Uh, we do see that bigger models introduce more challenges and our method helps more. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for clarifying. Um, 